Yo, what is up guys? Today I'm gonna show you how to build a YouTube subscriber counter. I'm gonna go over to hardware right now, but this is gonna be a very short video, very quick and to the point. So what you wanna do first is to buy the hardware. The hardware is an ESP8266 chip and a max uh, 70 to 19 dot matrix. There's a lot of other YouTube videos out there how to make these. The only problem with those videos is that they're outdated in terms of the code and how to actually produce the numbers of your YouTube subscriber count. So for that, I've included the code at the bottom in the description. All I have to do is download the libraries and the code and make sure you have your libraries in the correct folder for the Arduino and then you can just upload the code and it should work. And there's just a couple things that you have to change in code. So this is really not a hard project at all. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna buy an ESP8266 chip. It's gonna look something like that. You have this big Wi-Fi module there on the chip. You wanna buy that. Don't buy, do not buy this one, which is what I did going off of an older YouTube video where they link this. Do not buy this chip. So, an older YouTube video, I think the one with the most views right now, links this chip in the description. Don't buy that, that does not work. You wanna buy the ESP8266. The other one is called like ESP8222 or something like that. They're very similar names on Amazon, so you just gotta be careful. The next thing you wanna buy is the Max 7219. So I'll link this on Amazon, but it looks something like this, right? Easy. The only other thing that you need is a case, and you can 3D print that or make it out of wood, whatever you wanna do. I 3D print mine, and it looks something like this. So this is called a cord grip on the back. That'll let you do your power cord through here. So it's just a 3D print with two parts. You got plastic backing and you got the main part to hold that max display. I've also recessed it a little bit because I also bought a piece of black acrylic. So I'm gonna put the black acrylic over the max so it kind of gives it a more refined look and not as like ugly and raw. Here are the two 3D print parts. Uh, again, this is called a core grip, and then these STL files are down in the description. All right, so when you're done soldering, should look something a little bit like this, and then we can make all of our connections onto these attachments on the back. Luckily, the Max comes with its own cords, so you don't have to do any more soldering. The only soldering you have to do is for the ESP8266 chip. This is like a mini Arduino with a Wi-Fi module on it, so it's pretty cool. So the next step is important. That's wiring your ESP8266 to your LED display. You have these pinouts on the back here. You have VCC, that's your voltage. Plug that into 3.3. GND is ground. Plug that into your ground on your chip. DEN will be D8, CS will be D7, and CLK will be D8 on your ESP chip. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this. Now, the next step is to hot glue this guy right there, just so we have a nice little attachment and a little module. Okay, so now, before you hot glue anything, this is probably the part in the video where you need to go take your chip, plug into your computer, download all the code, make sure everything works. You got the Max connected to the ESP, you got the ESP connected to your computer, you upload the Arduino code, put in all your Google API information and your YouTube channel ID code, download it, get everything working, and then, you can finish up everything. I know this works for me, so that's why I'm hot gluing now. You don't need much. Next up, I'm gonna cut this piece of acrylic, uh, and then we can hot glue it onto the front piece of the 3D print. And then we can hot glue the LED module inside the case, and then we'll go upstairs, we'll go to the computer, and I'll show you all the coding bit. Seriously, so easy. 
This is really fun too. This is a good project. You should do it. All right, next step is take our little module, glue it into the enclosure, and then we glue the front panel, the front acrylic panel onto the enclosure, connect the USB micro into the ESP chip, and then we can run our code to the module and get this thing up and running. Okay, so it should look something like this. You'll notice that there's kind of a gap here because there are different manufacturers for these and they come in different sizes. So the ones I got previously were a little bit bigger. This one's a little bit smaller, but just center it up with the hot glue. Once you put that acrylic panel on here, you won't be able to tell that there's even a gap there. What's up guys, now we are in the software side of things. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna open or you're gonna download the file from my Google Docs uh, in the description of the YouTube video. You'll see these three things, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is download your Arduino IDE, okay? You can download it from the Windows Store. So just download it from this link right here, okay? So once you download it, it should make a, a folder on your inside your documents folder and it's called Arduino. Okay, in Arduino, you're gonna take your libraries, you're gonna do copy all, and you're gonna put it inside your library folder. So it should, your library folder should look something like this. Okay, after you copy all these libraries into your library folder, you wanna open up um, the Arduino IDE. Okay, we're gonna open that up, so it's gonna look something like this. Okay, now we have to configure the Arduino IDE for the ESP80 8266. So open up this README, and what you want to do now is you go to File, Preferences, and you go down here to your additional board manager URL. You're going to copy and paste. It's going to look, it's going to be blank for you. So you just copy and paste it into there, and you hit OK. After that, you want to hit Tools. You want to go to Boards. You want to go to Board Manager and you want to type in ESP8266, okay? And then you want to install that. After you install that, you should get some new, new uh, libraries and new uh, board options. So what you want to do now, if you purchase the board from Amazon, the one I linked in the description of the YouTube video, you go down here, you go to ESP8266 board, and you select the Wemos D1 R2 Mini. So select that. Okay, after that, then you have to install drivers. So the way to install the drivers so your computer can rec recognize the board is you wanna go to this link right here on GitHub. You wanna download the drivers. Okay, so you get these three options. You got Windows, Mac, and Linux. So download for the correct one. I'm on Windows, so I downloaded Windows. I went ahead and installed that. After that, your Arduino IDE software should recognize the board and that the board is plugged into your PC. You'll know that if you get a new option on your, on your COM ports. So you wanna go into Tools, Port, and select the correct port. It won't be on COM port one, and most likely it will be something else. So you select COM port three. Okay, we wanna make sure that the board actually works. You know, there could be a defect, could something you know, you could have shocked the board. I don't know. So we want to test it and make sure it works. So go to File, Examples, ESP8266, go to Blank. Okay, that'll open up a new sketch. So what you want to do now is just hit the Upload button. And it should take a little bit to upload the sketch. But what this sketch does is that it will blink the LED on the board. So you should see a blue flashing light. And if it uploads, see, it uploaded. And now I'm getting a blue flashing light on the board on the back. So I know the board is working. 
now that I know the board is working, now we can actually go into the software for the YouTube sub counter. So open up FJ sub counter version 3.0. You want to open that up and it looks something like this. Okay. So I took some of the old code from these previous YouTube videos and modify it for myself. So what you want to do down here is go to your, your, your API key and enter your API key in between the quotation marks. So you're gonna have to get a YouTube API key. I'm not gonna go over it in this video. It's pretty, pretty easy. There's a bunch of different things on Google that you can find out how to do this. Very easy. Next thing you want to do is you want to enter your channel ID name. So once you enter your channel ID name, uh, you find that on YouTube in your advanced settings, channel ID name, not the other one. Okay. So after that, after you input that stuff, I'm going to exit out here and go to mine, which has my information. Okay. So once you get your YouTube API code and your channel ID, then all you have to do, and you put it inside those quotation marks, all you have to do is upload. Okay. So this should upload. So there's a couple of different, while it's uploading, I'll go kind of over the code. There's some additional things I added. So I added a way to not hard code the ESP board so you can connect to it with your phone. You don't have to hard code your Wi-Fi credentials in the board itself. So you can use your, your, your iPhone or whatever phone you have to connect to the board and give it that those credentials and then it'll start running the code. So that's a new change I made. If you go through the code, you'll see that there's an Instagram section. I had that all commented out because uh, if you ping Instagram's website too many times, they'll block your IP address. So none of the Instagram stuff works. It'll work for a little bit, but then Instagram will over time just block your IP address and you won't be able to use it and it'll throw an error in the code. So I commented all that stuff out. It's not really worth going through. So it's done up uploading. As you can see here, it says done uploading. So after it is finished uploading, you should see Wi-Fi. So what I'm going to do now is get my phone, go into my Wi-Fi settings. Okay, so I'm going to hit the YT sub counter on my Wi-Fi settings, and then it should bring up a login page. You're going to hit configure Wi-Fi, and then you're going to hit the name of your Wi-Fi, and you're going to go down and you're going to input your, your password. And then it should say saving credentials. Then if you put in your password correctly, it should say linked. And after this, it should, should show your subscriber count. So I got 923 subscribers. Um, super easy to do. Um, everything is pretty pretty easy as long as you move those libraries over and you configure the board correctly on the software side. You should be able to get to this step pretty quickly. Um, there was a lot of pain going through a bunch of these libraries, but I have all the correct libraries. So all you have to do is copy those libraries over and upload the code. Yeah, so it makes it really easy to connect it with your phone. You don't have to basically hard code your Wi-Fi credentials into the board. This allows you to just throw a power adapter on the other end of the USB and plug it into your wall. You don't have to keep it plugged into your computer and have to like, if you change your Wi-Fi, you don't have to change the code basically. You just have to connect to it with your phone again and, and redo everything. There is one code, there is one line of code inside of um, the program that will allow you to do an automatic connection. So every time you unplug uh, the sub counter um, and plug it back in, it will connect uh, automatically without having to go through the Wi-Fi credential process again. So that's this line right here. It's Wi-Fi manager dot reset settings. Comment it out if you want to connect automatically and only go through that setup uh, setup process once. But if you lose Wi-Fi or you're, you're changing Wi-Fi um, credentials, then just comment that out and it should connect automatically uh, depending on the saved settings on the board going through the first time. Um, this code does make use of you know, you know, previous YouTube videos, so I'm just adding on to it um, and kind of changing it up. And this is recent. Today is December 27th, uh, 2020, and it's working. So just move these libraries over into your library folder, upload this code, 
and make sure you have your API key and your channel ID correct and this should work for you. Uh, I went through a lot of uh, trouble uh, getting this to work because all the old code uh, wasn't working for me so I had to make sure some of the libraries I had to backdate uh, some of the new updates to some of these libraries uh, make the code not work. So as is right now, this works. All right, so if you also wanna add a buzzer, you can buy a passive buzzer, connect the signal, which is on the right here with the S, connect that to D1 on your ESP chip, and then connect the other side to ground. And the code, how it works, it will buzz every time you get a new subscriber. And the code refreshes every 10 seconds. So if you're getting a subscriber, new subscribers constantly, probably a bad idea to use this buzzer, but if you have kind of a slow rate, uh, like myself, uh, the buzz will be pretty cool because I'll know that we, I get a new I have a new subscriber. It's a little cool uh, little thing. Um, these are really cheap. Uh, passive buzzers that you can get online on Amazon. I got a whole entire uh, sensor kit. So like I just have a bunch of different sensors that I was messing around with. So I thought it'd be pretty cool to see what I could do. Um, but yeah, this will this will buzz every time you get a new subscriber. Thought that was a little fun addition uh, to this project as well. All right, so that concludes this project. So if you're looking to get a YouTube subscriber counter, not for $200 and for around $20, uh, this is the most recent video. So hopefully if you try this project, everything works. Uh, if not, leave a comment on the video and I'll get back to you and try to figure out what's going wrong. But everything should work. This is the most recent video um, I did from another video by the acrylic that they referenced and it is opaque acrylic and not transparent. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some transparent gray acrylic and I'll link it in the video that I, what I get. Basically what you do is you just put it right over here. And so it will give you a nice um, display with good contrast as opposed to seeing just the LEDs. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate you guys watching this video. Hopefully if you do do this project, everything works out. And now if you subscribe, I will not only see the subscribe go up, but I'll hear it buzz. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you subscribe so I can see it and I will catch you later.